So um, here we are for another um, edition of the Dean Artist Lounge. We have two, two very special guests today, which is really nice. Um, one, Mr. Christian Martucci. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? Good. Um, and second, we're, we're happy enough to be joined with our CEO of Dean Guitars, Mr. Evan Rubinson. How you doing, bro? Hey, guys. <clears throat> so hey, we're, we're going to talk about all kinds of fun stuff today. Um, we'll try to keep it uh, relatively short, but we're going to have a great time and just kind of hang out. I know you're in Oregon, so it's one o'clock here in Tampa, but like 10 a.m. for you. So thanks for getting up early and joining us today, for sure. No worries at all. <laughs> so, I mean, you're, you've been you've been with us now what about a year? Um, I want to say since, well, I started using, um, I started using the 77 V I think in towards the end of 2017. So wow, it's been really, okay. It's been, it's been longer than I thought. Um, yeah, a little, it was right after rock on the range. Yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, speaking of that, it's interesting. Um, I'd kind of like to get a little bit of a backstory because Evan's here and you're here, kind of how this whole thing came together. Because, I mean, I've been the A&R director for Dean, you know, for years and years, but um, Evan got in the fold in 17 and really got heavily involved and started attending a lot of the festivals, which in the past, you know, uh, God, God bless his dad, but he had never really did that kind of stuff. So it was the first time, like our CEO consistently went to festivals, which I was stoked about because it was kind of a boots on the ground, see what kind of, he was digging in, right? So I was real happy about that. But um, we were kind of dividing and conquering at Rock on the Range and Evan and Christian, you guys connected somehow, but I kind of like to hear that story. Um, yeah, uh, we were um, like a lot of the rock on the range festivals you know there was a there was a some crazy thunderstorm watch so you know tornado or something yeah uh, it was just like it, it, it was kind of a mess so i was uh standing outside the dressing room just kind of like uh you know waiting to see what was going to happen waiting to go on or whatever and evan was out was was out in the uh sort of hallway area thing or whatever and um he, we were just we ended up talking just random whatever and uh and you know uh it i didn't even know but like 15 minutes into the conversation he was like he was like oh yeah I've, uh, dean guitars or whatever and i was just like i was like you're the ceo of dean you know like it was it was, it was shocking me because I, I i i had never seen um um you know, a, a CEO of any company being, you know, a, a similar age to me. So I thought that was, that, that was really cool, you know, mm -hmm. we were hanging out and, uh, and uh, yeah. So you, guys, it, you guys hadn't played yet. No, we were, it was maybe about an hour before we went on. Well, not only is it interesting to see a young CEO, but even a CEO in the, in the, the, the kind of the bowels and the guts of a festival. I mean, that's even more rare and cool. You know what I mean? You just, you'd never see that, you know what well, I mean? It's um, really funny. I remember uh, part of my icebreaker line when I walked up, I was like, hey man, are you guys getting paid for this? If, you know, there's a rain delay and you don't play? And Christian kind of looked at me and he was like, dude, honestly, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great, man. That's great. Uh, yeah, because that was, um, I mean, ultimately every year at Rock on the Range, there's a tornado, some hellacious thunderstorm. I think we got evacuated a couple times that year. Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was it, it was a mess. But you know, the the show went on and it ended up being, uh, ended up being really great. Yeah, it was uh, that was interesting because he told me he said, um, "Man, I met uh, Christian from at the time Stone Sour," and I go, "Great." You know, I said, where'd you meet him? He's always hanging out in the hallway. I'm like, hanging out in the hallway. <laughs> and so, and then, then it all made sense once it all once it all kind of came together. And then you guys talked for quite a while before I was even brought into the fold, which was great. I mean, you know, it's it's killer that Evan, you're so involved. I mean, so you guys spoke quite a bit. And then I remember you kind of bringing, bringing him to the table and then we kind of spoke from there. Yeah, it was the weirdest thing because not even um... – you know, not even a week before that, I was actually looking at the Dean website because I, I, I had heard that um, they did some, uh, like a USA run of a uh, 77 V, which was like, you know, when, when I was a kid, I mean, you know, you saw that guitar, you definitely noticed it. And um, oh yeah, uh, I remember telling him, I was like, you know, I was just looking at your website because I really wanted one of those uh, 77 um USAVs and not even, you know, 
right at the end of that tour, I'd emailed him about it, you know, to see about getting one, and you know, ended up ended up showing up uh, a couple of days later, and um, I took it with me the next day to Europe, and I ended up using it as my my main guitar in all of those tunings, and well, in that specific tuning that it was set up for, and. Um, I just loved it, and uh, I was really blown away by the uh, by the quality, and uh, you know, it was just it's just a great USA rock and roll machine. <laughs> it's, uh, it's about as close as you're going to get to a '77 V without getting an actual '77 V. So we're uh, we're pretty proud of that run. I got to tell you, did you ever tell him the story about how he got that guitar, Evan? No. <laughs> so, so. Um... For your own edification, I uh, I went through great lengths to claw that back from someone at the eleventh hour because I was like, "You need this guitar. You have to have it before you go to Europe." And um, so we definitely uh, we pulled some strings and we got yeah. it back. Yeah, I think the quote was, "We have to get Christian this guitar. Do whatever it takes." <laughs> <laughs> That's what we did. <laughs> It's amazing. It's very much appreciated because that guitar actually was used um, before, you know, before I even r really had like an affiliation with Dean. That guitar was used um, from the first show I used it at all the way to the last one. It's um, killer, so man. Probably over a hundred yeah. shows that guitar played. Um, was I think one of the coolest things I've ever, I've ever heard from anyone um, that I've gotten the privilege to hear is at one point you texted me towards the end of that tour and you were like, hey man, this may very well be the only guitar that makes me think about maybe wanting to go exclusive. Yeah, man, um, it, uh, you know, I'm not gonna mention any other brands or whatever, but, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, um, I've got USA guitars from other companies and stuff from over the years or whatever and um, you know, it just, I, I, I just, I couldn't believe how perfect everything was, you know, the, the fretwork, the binding, the, um, and just the tone out of it. Like you could tell that it was, it, it was made from a, a good solid piece of, you know, right. nothing but on. the best baby. Yeah. So, um, I, yeah, I was, I was really excited about the guitar. Um, and, uh, I still am, I've got some, uh, some more of them back here. Nice. my right or your left and um and i i absolutely love them and you know I, honestly until uh, uh until i tried the thoroughbred it was pretty much i mean throughout the remainder of stone sour and also the black star riders tour those were all nothing but uh but the v's um and uh you mm -hmm. know i uh i i picked up a, a thoroughbred recently and um that just that guitar blows my mind yeah, well, get, good, lucky for you, we have uh, two more in the works, so um, yeah. we're, uh, we're excited about that. And um, I actually want to I'll actually tell you in person now, I mean, pseudo in person, like Corona person these days, um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that those guitars are going to be uh, going to be ready. So I want to give you the heads up on that. And, uh, you know, we um, we kind of told our, our paint department to stop what they were doing and get these things done. And, and Dan and all the boys back in the uh, USA shop, you know, best shop in the world, right on. Yeah. Um, they busted their ass and got them done, pushed them through. Uh, the painters stopped what they were doing to get those ready. So um, obviously Stone Sour is, is done, taking a break, whatever that is. Um, now with Corey Taylor, you guys are like really just setting the world on fire. And uh, I know you guys got some stuff coming up, but damn, dude, you guys have been killing it lately. Well, you know, I mean, we've, uh, everybody in Corey's uh, a solo band, I mean, uh, we get, we go back, some of us, 20 years, you know, and um, it's just, it, it, it's cool to have that in the band. Had it in Stone Sour also, because I've, I've been friends with Roy and uh, since I was maybe 15 years old and Johnny Chow, we all, we all used to live in New York City at the same time back in yeah. the midnight. And um, so, um, I, I think it's important to have a, a family kind of vibe in a band, you know, because sure. uh, a lot of time with those guys. And uh, same, um, same with our guitar that, company, oddly enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you've worked with somebody for such a long time and you've had no incidents or nothing, uh, nothing 
you know, and it's all been nothing but good, uh, good vibes and stuff. We just enjoy each other's company, you know. It's cool. Well. I mean, hell, hopefully, once all this all this shit blows over, man, you'll be enjoying each other's company even more, uh, you know, on a more consistent basis, you know, and, and things get back to normal for the love of love of God, you know. Yeah, um, I hope so, man. This has been this has been uh, <laughs> it's been really hard. Um, tell, tell me, tell me about the Black Star Riders thing. I mean, that's an interesting band because you've got Corey Taylor on one side, right? And then you've got Black Star Riders on the other, completely different entities, sounds, approaches, the whole nine yards. I mean, Black Star Riders is, is an amazing, amazing group of dudes and the songs are great. Um, it's It's gotta be interesting shifting gears from one to the other, you know what I mean? You know, it, it, it's funny, it isn't, it isn't. I think we talked about this before, like the, the, the love of classic rock, you know? Mm -hmm. and, Yes, being a, a huge, uh, you know, really important part of that. But also for me, uh, Finn Lizzie is uh, of course. Is very close to the top. I mean, yeah. it's like just ACDC, Finn Lizzie, um, yeah. and you know, the, the, the obvious other heavy contenders. But um, so I, I knew that the Stone Sour tour was uh, was wrapping up, which meant a new Slipknot album, which meant I was going to be home for a couple of years. And, yeah, um, right. Just a couple of years. Yeah, so I mean, the, our our producer Jay Weston, who did the last Stone Sour album and Corey's uh, new album, um, had done uh, the previous Black Star Writers album, and um, or he mixed them or something like that. So he told me, he was like, "Hey man, you know, I know you got some time off," and uh, he was like, "Black Star Writers are actually looking for a guitar player because Damon Johnson um, has decided he wants to, you know." Um, stay home and do his own thing and be with us and all that stuff um and i i think damon's an amazing guitar player oh, like yeah, the, of course. the stuff he did with brother kane and alice yeah. Cooper. i love brother kane man yeah, man. Man. Kane with, dude. I, I was, man how often in your life do you get to like uh you know step in after somebody like like damon or jim yeah. reed or like that yeah. i mean i got that's a couple of times in, in my case but um but, you know, just to be able to play with Scott Gorham, you know, who was mm -hmm. a guitar girl of mine, um, you know. Uh, yeah, it's huge. Uh, all those classic Tim Muzzy albums and whatever. And uh, I was, I, I had already listened to the band and I was really into the band before that. So it seemed like a no brainer. So I got on the phone with Ricky, we talked and uh, I, I actually had to send in a, a video of me playing the song, you know, which was cool. You know, it wasn't just like, okay, you're in Stone So or you can join our band. They're like, nah, you gotta, you gotta show us that you can. And so, so I you, sent you, you had to, you had to audition. Yeah, I did a, I did a, a, a virtual audition, and um, love it. They, they called me back the same day, and they're like, they're like, yeah, we want you to do this, and as much. Um, you know, I, I, I realize that, you know, you have a band that has like a commercial success of Stone Sour and stuff like that. And that that's all great, too. But Black Star Writers, it's like, uh, for me, it was just like, I want to play this music. Right. You know, um, you know uh, it is more of a classic rock crowd and stuff, which obviously because of Femme Lizzie. But there's nothing wrong with that, man. Classic no, rock. not at all. Hell, you kidding me? I mean, I they have good ears, man. You can't fool them. You yeah. Know? Well, and it's a, you know, it's a little bit different approach too. I mean, did you guys do stateside tours with Black Star? We didn't. No, we just um, we we did um, so we put out the the album right, and it actually it was the number one rock album in the UK, which is awesome. Amazing. Um, Easy. we went over to tour, so I got to go to Ireland, Scotland. I played probably, we probably played a hundred shows in the UK, more shows in the UK than I've played with any band ever. And, uh, then we went out to the rest of Europe and, uh, took a break, um, you know, and, um, we were getting ready to come back and do all the summer festivals and everything in, uh, in Europe. And, um, and then this thing happened. Yeah, right. I know. Trust me, dude. I mean, it's obviously created a huge bunch of problems for everyone, specifically the music business, for crying out loud. I mean, yeah. for people figuring out how to navigate it, you know, whatever. But hopefully at some point, you know, we get back to normal. And, and um, you know, we've tried to get you to Tampa a couple of times and, and fate has intervened. I, think, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I can't believe they canceled my flight, man. I mean, what the fuck? Uh, Wait, let me ask you really quickly. What, um... How have you been filling your time during Corona, 
How have you kind of been coping with it and what have you been doing? What's your daily routine at this point? Well, when it first happened, um, you know, everybody was freaking out, obviously. And I, I you know, everybody kind of thought it was only going to be a few weeks of a lockdown and then they'd get it under control. And obviously we're still here several months later. Um, so uh, Corey, we weren't supposed to record his album until he was done with the, uh, the Slipknot cycle. And uh, once everything got canceled or whatever, um, he decided now was as good of a time as any to do it. So, um, so I've actually been busier, I think, in lockdown than than I was when you know before because you know we had uh, we ended up recording 25 songs in two and a half weeks. It's all all the music live. Um, so I only had uh, a couple of weeks to prepare. Um, what I was going to do on all of these songs. So obviously that was a major time crunch to kind of get it together. And then we rehearsed for a couple of days, spent, you know, three weeks in Vegas or whatever. And uh, I came back and, um, you know, um, Corey's actually been doing things to some, to keep us busy somehow through all that. You know, we're still writing songs. Uh, we're making videos and, uh, um, you know, we've got some some special stuff lined up or whatever. So, um, I, I, I'm pretty grateful to you know actually have the ability to work on stuff. Plus, you know, I'm constantly working with uh, uh, Ricky Warwick from Black Star Writers on new music and stuff like that. And um, so, I, I've been really busy. Um, you know, un unfortunately, you know, um, artists make their living on on the road yeah after everybody else gets paid of course um yeah, yeah. of course <laughs> but um yeah people have a really warped perception of, of what what this is you know <laughs> they don't they don't get that really the the only reason to, to put yourself through this is because you don't have a choice you're either a musician or you're not right. and if you're a musician you're cursed and you're damned to uh yeah eat a lot of uh eat a lot of shit and then eventually yeah. you, you know you... you know it's funny i used to make a joke all the time to pro musicians and amateur musicians but the music business is the only profession where you'll drive or fly 18 hours to do something for 45 minutes oh, <laughs> it's, crazy. And, uh, it's really it's fucking insanity man to be honest with you it makes no sense and oftentimes it costs you more money than right <laughs> it's so crazy how it works and yeah listen if, if you get get in the music business because you love it because if you're getting in it to get rich at least initially you're fucking up <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what i think separates the uh the lifers from the guys that uh you know when i was a kid you know it was like everybody thought that like you know you uh you get a record deal and you make an album and all of a sudden you're vince neal cruising down sunset right. street, you yeah. know in a limo with a hot tub in the back of it <laughs> yeah you know, surrounded by girls or whatever you know it's just it, I, I i can assure you that's not what it is um at least not in this day and age but um you know you do it because you love it you know yeah. what i mean well let's, let's, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about about the gear man so yeah. thankfully you know we're very fortunate to have you in our dean guitars family in our artist fold um and actually you're one of our signature artists which i mean you're loud and proud on our website and a couple things i noticed right away about christian martucci which people may or may not know and evan was on this call too because um, we were all in the conference room at the same time when people could be close to each other uh, but um <laughs> you, you were very you're, you're like a gearhead man like you're you're super into like you don't just play guitar i mean you know you and i have shared some texts and some calls and stuff but like you're super into old like plexis and 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 tone but but more importantly i was very impressed on how and daryl was this way and carrie king was this way and a lot of our signature guys like you were very specific about what you like and you understand how guitars work which is kind of a you know without shitting on anybody but it's kind of a lost art you're like listen i want this value pot I want these pickups, I want this neck shape, I want this scale, I want this wood, I want lacquer instead of poly. Yeah, I mean, it was very, I was like, wow, all right, this guy knows his shit, dude. I gotta be honest, I was like, all right, he's not some knucklehead just out there banging out songs going, yeah, just make me a V, you know? <laughs> I, mean, you know I, mean that, I mean that with, with all the love, dude, but I mean, I was like, damn, all right, cool, because I, I get off on that shit too, and we all get off on it as a guitar company, and it's so much easier 
when someone says those things to us, like, yo, I want a 12 inch radius. I want 500 K audio taper pots. I was like, fuck yeah, dude. That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's, not it's, not easier. it's, it's really cool. It, it's cool to work with people that value. Them. Totally, totally. I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see it behind me, but underneath that. Uh, I can see it. Something, something's on the bench over there. Oh uh, yeah, that's a that's the black select. I was just uh, doing some uh, some tweaking on it, um, but uh, you know my my dad taught me how to solder when I was like seven years old or whatever. Valuable um, skill. Um, so I, ever since I was a little kid, especially when I didn't have money and stuff like that, it's like I, I can't pay somebody you know eighty bucks to swap out pickups for me. Yeah. Or for, a bad pot and take two weeks to do it and all that stuff so i really got into as long as i can remember taking my guitars apart and you know um but it's putting them back together that's that's the hard part <laughs> upgrading things soldering rewiring all of that stuff so i mean um i i'm surprised that more guys don't do that i mean I, there's a lot of guys that don't know how to adjust a truss rod or swap pickups or or solder properly like um a, a lot of guitar guys will solder their guitars with cold solder joints and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. so yeah i i am to a certain extent i mean i i obviously i love the uh the classics um i'm a big fan of um of the guitar companies like dean that came out in the 70s to fill a void when um you know, some of the, the bigger ones were, were slipping. Um, they had been sold to other companies and whatever. So there was some, some weird issues there. Um, so yeah, um, I've, I've got, um, you know, I, I, I like guitar. I like old guitars. I like, um, you know, the, the old style of guitars, you yeah. know, the, the 12 inch radius. I don't need a compound radius. I don't yeah. need, you know, yeah. um, just, uh, just stuff like that, you know. Well, I, I think um, I think your signature guitar is a testament to that. I mean, your V, which is beautiful and is doing phenomenal, by the way. I mean, you know, those those are fantastic guitars. Everybody that buys them, which the, a, a large amount of people have bought them, um, love them. You know, and and we've got I've even got other artists asking for them. You know, regardless of whether it's a signature guitar or not, because it's so fucking cool, man. You know. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't want it. I, I didn't want it to be a guitar that um that was so like an obvious signature guitar. Um, you know, I I wanted it to be something like you know when when I was a kid, you know, and you know back in the '80s, and I walked into a, a guitar shop and I first saw that um you know that '77 Dean V that I, I talked about. You know. Yeah. I mean, it just completely stood out from everything else that was in the that was in the store. You know what I mean? And although I couldn't afford it at the time, you know, I did end up getting one eventually. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, a few years later, but you got you got it right from the source. You went straight to the top, man. I like your style. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, you, you know, the, the Martucci V is killer. Um, you just got one of our um, thoroughbred selects, which you know oh. your uh, your 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 uh, gleaming review was even privately. This wasn't even a public thing. Your gleaming review was um, was very positive and, and really kind of gave us a shot in the arm. It's like, all right, I mean, you know, we knew they were killer, but you know, when a guy like you gives it an endorsement like that, that really means a lot, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it, uh, it really started with a uh, hang on. One uh oh, he disappeared. It really started with this one. You know, this was the uh, this was the first uh, the first thoroughbred I got, and it's uh, USA Custom. And uh, I actually I have filter drums in it right now, which just kind of. But it was just it was a little experiment I was doing that. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna work out. I'm gonna I might put what was in there back in there. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, um, it's uh, I just I. I love the guitar, man. It's just, it's, 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 it's so comfortable to play. It's awesome. Um, it, uh, I mean, a a everything that I've gotten from you guys, um, has been, uh, <laughs> dare I say, um, uh, better than, um, anything that, um, I've got that anything that I've tried from, uh, you know, any, manufacturers that are doing stuff right now so um well i just you know, here's, here's the interesting thing man is that evan took over the company 17 right evan uh december of 16 but okay. this is okay and and so you know he's he's 
you know, he's done an amazing job kind of going to that, you know, second generation leadership, taking that next level for the company. And, you know, we're, we're like, like you said, going back to your, your kind of your family vibe. I mean, we've had a lot of our core group, Evan. I mean, since you were like six years old, man, I mean, <laughs> you know, I remember Evan running around, he's a little kid, right? So it shows how old a bunch of our, a bunch of us old bastards are that still work there. But, um, but um, you know, and, and, and from, from, you know, Elliot now to Evan, you know, he's even taken that passion for the USA product, I would say, with all due respect, Evan, even further than your father, you know, and, and to a point where he's like, listen, man, I want to be the Rolex of USA guitars. I want to be, you know, whatever that, whatever that, that high benchmark may be. And so that, you know, we've all really kind of, I mean, we were already great, but we've even risen to that occasion even further. And so we've kept our USA shop, Dan Russell and Jeff Kiner and all the boys back there, Pat Baker, who's a, a, a pickup, you know, a savant and genius. And so we've been able to keep our core group together to keep making the process better and better and better. And then when Evan came along and invested in it even more and said, we're, we're going to focus on this, that just upped the game even more. And so yeah. when guys like you come in and go, these are some of the best guitars I've ever played, along with guys like, you know, Dave Mustaine and Kerry King and, you know, Dimebag, God rest his soul, and some of these other people, and Leslie West, of course, who's a, a tonal, you know, legend, it's Michael Shanker, you know, mm -hmm. so Michael Amott. So it's it's really a big testament to how hard we've all worked, and, and thank you for that, um, you know. And, uh, you know. At the end of the day, a, a big part of it is who wants to make and play mediocre guitars? If you're going to do it, do it right. Right. Oh, man. I mean, um, you know, having uh, having used, um, you know, mostly uh, vintage guitars and whatever in the past and having to deal with the, the limitations of that, you know, them not really holding up very well on tour and having to constantly replace parts and stuff like that, um, not dealing with the weather changes perfectly. You would be very hard pressed to find a better USA made guitar than a Dean. Like, I mean, it, it, I mean, my techs, everybody, like when I hand them the guitars, they're like, they're like, man, these things just don't move. You know what I mean? Like they hard, they never have to adjust them or anything. They're just rock solid. They sound incredible. They feel incredible. Um, you know, like I said, I mean, I've got, I, I've got a lot of guitars here. You know what I mean? And uh, I mean, I had no, I had no reason to go. Uh, exclusive with anything because it's not like I, I needed guitars you know what I mean but I loved them so much that uh I just um you know now I've got um you know I mean they, they they've completely taken over my uh you know in a live setting and also on, on Corey's album man I use the thoroughbred all over that thing I mean well, I, think I, I saw it in the latest video um uh black eyes to blue the, the, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and so, you know, I guess just in, in, in summary, just, just a couple of things. I mean, you know, one, thanks again, both of you guys actually for being here, because Evan, I know you're trying to run a, a, a multi-million dollar guitar company. And, and uh, <laughs> Christian, I know, I know you're in Oregon at, at you know, what now, 10, 1030, 1040 a.m. So thank you for that. But one thing, uh, you know, that, that I didn't know about, about you, Christian, that I'm actually very uh, pleased to hear is that, and we'll just touch on this briefly, but you and I are both, and me, but you specifically, huge Kiss fanatics. I couldn't believe it. I was like, holy shit, dude. Yes. Yeah. I knew I liked you, but now I like you even more. <laughs> I've got, my, uh, I've got a, uh, all my stuff. Uh, so I, I wish you could see the inside of here a little bit better, because I've got everything. I've got the framed comic books, the dolls from the 70s, the lunchbox, all of that stuff. Oh, I love it, man. I love it. Just it's just don't give, a, just don't give a lunchbox to the kids, man, because something bad will happen to it. Yeah, no, I, yeah, it, it, this, uh, this area of the house, which is like my studio or whatever is, uh, it's, it's separate from the rest of the house. And, uh, actually that, uh, that door behind me is, um, another room, the same size as this room. And that's where all the guitar storage is. And I have, uh, I built, um, ISO booths in there. So I have cabinets mic'd up in there and, uh, record everything through here. I'm going to do something real quick and see if you can um i don't know if you can maybe yeah you know what it's not working for some reason oh well i was gonna i was gonna try to move this camera and show you around but it's not uh oh that's all right we'll we'll, we'll save that for a uh separate segment 
yeah <laughs> but there's some cool stuff in here but yeah um kish you know uh, <laughs> uh you know you said something about kiss actually um but uh and i agree with it 100 percent. i don't trust anybody who doesn't like kiss <laughs> thank you i really don't and, and I, it, i've met a few and they, 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 they've all shaken out to be a bunch of shady bastards so yeah, your theory yeah. is right they are <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but I have like a Gene Simmons bust. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. He's wearing like, a wearing a Dean mask right yeah, now. He's got, yeah, he's got the mask on there. Uh, I, I hope he doesn't see this. He'll want to get paid. But um. <laughs> yeah, Gene, we're we're cool. No, I'm just kidding. I, we 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 love Gene. Um, but so um, so you have some cool stuff coming up. Um, the videos have been blowing up. The first video, Corey Taylor must be stopped was killer. Uh, black eyes to blue is killer. Um, do, do you guys have videos in the can? Or are you are you shooting them as you as you need? We're kind of just taking it as it comes, man. Um, yeah. uh, we we did shoot the two videos in a in a two day period. So wow. two videos, two days. Um, that black eyes blue video, man. It was we did it in the desert. There was no air conditioning. It was <laughs> hot as balls. It was so hot, man. Um, but. Uh, and you know the same thing we shot we we keep everything in vegas um just so that we're not uh we're not spreading germs around all over the place you know sure. um we're, it's, we're, not your, it's not your germs we're worried about man i gotta be honest with you I mean. uh, <laughs> yeah yeah i mean I, I i i don't really have anything around i mean i live in a pretty rural part of oregon so i mean i'm in a wooded area so all i've got are like deer and rabbits and you know that yeah. kind of thing rock mm -hmm. chucks well, you, know, you need something to eat, man. Just hang out the window with a rifle and just, you know, get your dinner, you know. You know. Okay. Or hang out with the coronavirus. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. So, well, listen, man, we, we really appreciate you um, making time for us today, man. And, you know, we're excited to have you as a Dean Signature artist, man. I mean, your Christian Martucci V is a killer instrument, man. I know we're going to have a long, illustrious future. And, um, you know, thank you for being here today. Evan, thank you too, man. I know, like I said, taking time out of your busy schedule today to uh, do this uh, means a lot. It's good to see you. Yeah, man. I mean, this is the first time I think we actually like met in person, but not really in person kind of, you know. Um, <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm stoked for that, man. And, and thank you, Christian. You know, best to you and your family. Hopefully you guys stay healthy. We're really looking forward to seeing you back on the road with Corey Taylor and, and Black Star Riders and everybody, man. So here's... Here's to Christian, Evan, Dean Guitars, you know, Dean Artist Lounge, man. Let's hope uh, shit get back to normal pretty soon. And uh, we can all hang out in person, you know, finally, you know, one of these days, right? Amen. All right. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, hey, you guys. Thanks, Christian. All right. Yeah. Thanks, See you. Josh. Here it goes.